This is episode 300. I just want us to pause. Episode 300 of the Beyond the Food Show. Not only are we celebrating the 300th episode in our sixth year of podcasting, but I'm also going to share my lived experience of how I embrace the audacity of self-acceptance. Ready? Let's do this. Welcome to the Going Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist and creator of the Going Beyond the Food Method. And after a 25-year dieting career that started at the age of 12, I decided to say hell no to diet culture and undiet my life. It is now my mission to help women undiet their life. If you're new to our podcast, be sure to grab our free podcast roadmap at stephaniedoze.com forward slash roadmap. Ready, sisters? Let's do this. Hello, my sisters. 300 freaking episode. I never thought when I started podcasting five years ago that we would be here today. I held a deep belief that I wasn't able to be consistent. And you guessed it. (laughs) I learned to believe that about myself because of my, quote, failure with dieting. And I never thought that I could be able to pull 300 episodes of the podcast. And this platform podcasting has allowed me to prove myself wrong. I was wrong. I was able to be consistent. The problem wasn't me. The problem was the diets, which is our entire platform year. I'm so excited to be sharing this episode with you. It's going to be a special episode. It's going to be another journal entry about my personal journey. It's going to be serious. It's going to be fun. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be vulnerable. It's going to be all the things. I call these episode journal entry. And if you've been with us, maybe for the five years, you've known the episode that we categorize as, quote, she's beyond the food. These were journal entry of my journey in going beyond food. And today is going to be chapter six. The last time I did one of those episodes, She's Beyond the Food, is actually dating back two and a half years. In July of 2019, when I shared with you my bathing suit confident journey. And I was actually, I don't know, I can't remember if I mentioned it on the podcast, but when I recorded this episode, I was on a cruise ship, bringing back all kinds of memories here. And since then, and through that, I've done five more episodes. So if you scroll through the feed, you'll be able to find them. They're dating back as far as episode 100 that I did. That's how it started this series, actually, with a friend of mine, Sean Croxton, He's probably the last self-identified man to be on the podcast, actually. Sean came in, Sean Croxon, if you don't know him, he's a longtime podcaster. He actually hosts a top-ranking podcast called Quote of the Day. And he came into our podcast to interview me to share my journey. So today, chapter six is obviously a update of where I am today in my journey beyond the food. And as I shared with you before, my methodology that I use professionally through my companies, the going to beyond the food method, is something that I create as I heal myself, as I'm studying myself, I create the pieces, the part of my approach to undieting our life. And what I'm going to share with you today is that stage of my journey where I came to fully understand how systemic oppression distorted my self-image, my self-concept, 
I'm also going to talk about how I've learned to change my beliefs, dismantle the old belief and create new beliefs that is allowing me to chase my goals in my life or what I want my life to be, not what it has to be, but what I want it to be. And I'm also going to end talking about the concept of self-love and my thoughts on that because they're changing. I'm also going to talk about money. So stay tuned for the whole podcast. But before we get into this, I want to acknowledge a group of people that are without their knowing, maybe, probably most of them don't know that, they, this group of very unique people, have contributed to this podcast episode to my methodology going beyond the food method tremendously. And these are my clients and my students, that you are a professional, just a regular woman, that you studied with me, that I've coached you. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me in your journey. I'm always honored to stand side by side with you. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you for co-creating my body of work with me. And I'm emotional as I'm saying this because it means the world to me truly that you are here and you're doing this work with me and I'm with you on this part of this journey. So thank you. Now, I've been preparing for this podcast for a number of weeks, and I've wrote notes and stories I wanted to share with you, (laughs) and I have 2,000 words on my notepad, my electronic notepad, so honestly, I don't know how long this podcast is going to be, so you're coming on a ride with me on this podcast. Ready? Let's do this. I want to ground this podcast episode into a few realities. I am a cisgendered straight woman. My pronouns are she and her. I'm white, I'm fat, and I come from a safe financial background. So this is my perspective, not the perspective of everyone. If I was to say one sentence that describe this update to my personal journey beyond the food, I would have to say the following. I have developed a brand new relationship to myself with food and with my body, but specifically over the last few years beyond the food and beyond my body as well. Four years ago, I was introduced to taught work also known as self-coaching, also known as cognitive behavior therapy and adaptation of CBT. And that approach to healing our mind, our thoughts, and our brain has allowed me to develop a relationship to myself, one of acceptance and love. Thought work has allowed me to put a bow, like on a gift, on my personal journey to food and body. It allowed me to meet me, myself, with complete acceptance. And that translated in my personal acceptance of myself, but also into my methodology and what I share within my program under a concept called undieting your brain and self-coaching. The truth is, for most of my life, I misunderstood acceptance. And I was wrong. I used to believe that acceptance meant resignation and giving up on myself. I thought that acceptance was passive and lazy. That's what I was taught. And that I needed to fight to resist to be strong and acceptance wasn't part of that image. The pain that I attributed to my body being, quote, wrong and my inability to control what I ate was actually created by the resistance I opposed to myself and my body. My unwillingness to accept my body was 
painful and created a lot of suffering. Emotionally, with deep sensation and emotion of shame and sadness. Mentally, because I was in a constant state of resistance, constantly monitoring my level of, quote, effort to fix myself. And that presented itself with constant self-criticism in my mind. I was always seeking to find my fault and correct it before anyone else could notice it. I spent resources, time, money, emotional space, mental space to manage other people's perception of me instead of building my own opinion of myself. I tell you this with deep vulnerability and transparency. For years, decades, I gave away my vital energy resisting, accepting who I was, including my body. If you had met me in my 20s or 30s, and you would have asked me, how are you doing, Stephanie? The answer for sure would have included, oh, I'm busy, I'm just too busy. (laughs) Can you relate to this? To be honest, I dedicated my time to being perfect in order to upset the body that I thought was wrong and the essence of myself that I believed to be not enough. And because I wasn't giving myself validation, I had to work hard, aka spent hours and hours making sure that no one around me had anything bad to say about me because that would be absolutely destructive to me. Perfectionism, people pleasing, all or nothing thinking, the concept of diet brain that I teach in my program, that's who I was in my 20s and 30s. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars resisting me, my body, my food, and my essence of who I was constantly trying to fix me. I have an an extract for you to share from a journal in 2010. April 14th, 2010. I started journaling at that point in my life, not because I wanted to know myself better, because a coach had told me that if I wanted to stop, quote, craving food, I would have to learn to process my craving on papers. So I started journaling. And that is one of the first entry in this journal that I still have today. I have actually a stack of journal in my room, in my bedroom, from all the personal work I've done on myself over the years. But that entry shows you where I was 10 years ago. And it goes as follows. I create the highest insult to myself by not controlling food. How sad. I carried so much guilt and shame around not being able to control food, to eat less, to eat what I used to call, quote, bland food, instead of just seeing food for its function. And all the efforts in my life were an attempt to control the craving that were so bad in my mind. And then something happened. There's another entry in my journal two years later, and it's dated of May 22nd, 2012. And it says as followed. Today, I discovered after reading an article in a wellness magazine that I have a little bully inside of me. This bully is my little voice that always tells me, quote, it's not good enough. Quote, you didn't try hard enough. Quote, you didn't do it perfectly enough. Everyone around me tell me how awesome of a person I am, but I don't believe it. I think my work is to start to believe that I could be 
an awesome person. So today, I need to start recognizing myself for all the good things that I do. End of the journal entry. That's 10 years ago. Little did I know this article in this little wellness magazine was going to propel me in understanding myself better. And then shortly after that, I began therapy, counseling, and finally, over the last four years, coaching. One of the most significant learning over these years of mind work has been the proper understanding of acceptance, or at least a version of acceptance that benefit me, not the system, but me, instead of a version that tears me apart and create massive suffering for me. Here's what I know and understand of acceptance as of today. Acceptance for me start by perceiving the reality as it is right now. How things are instead of how I want them to be. It's about seeing what is now without wanting to change it or resist it. Acceptance doesn't mean I can't work on changing things. But instead, by struggling against accepting the reality and resisting it and rejecting it, I create unnecessary additional suffering for myself. Self-acceptance is an ongoing, active process. And I talk about acceptance and self-acceptance fluidly through this podcast because it's about me. When I didn't except my body for an example, I was not only rejecting my body image, but I was rejecting who I was at my essence, my own goodness, my own amazingness. I was rejecting, resisting who I was globally because who I thought I was, was wrong. I'd like to share a quote with you from Alfred Hernandez, and it goes as follows. That none of us see ourselves directly, but instead we see ourselves through the reflection of others. Because of who humans are, we define ourselves unconsciously by the reflection that others have on us, unless... We take an active, intentional role in defining ourselves. So for me, I was defining myself, measuring myself against the reflection I was getting from the external world. My self-image, my self-concept, my self-perception was unconsciously built by what society's reflection of women like me was. In a patriarchal society, a woman needs to obey rule, to seek to please others, to be quiet, to not take too much space, and most often to say yes. And I didn't fit most of these standards. I was constantly reflected that I didn't fit in, that I was a rebel. And that started at the age of 12, when I met up with diets and beauty culture, the thin ideal, and then I worked hard from there on to, quote, fit in, to control my body through food and exercise so I can shrink my body and fit the beauty standard. And I was loud. I always had an opinion. And I was constantly reminded that wasn't the right thing to do as a woman. Every standard that was laid out, I didn't fit in. And as a result, I rejected myself. I resisted accepting me. My self-image was distorted due to the destructive cultural message that I was receiving and that I had over time internalize. And to support this rejection that I was giving to myself, 
I supported this with distorted thinking pattern like perfectionism and people pleasing and all or nothing thinking in order to survive. And that, my sister, when I realized that, that was a massive turning point. Because in that moment that I was introduced to that systemic oppression and all the system that I created, that distorted self-image that I was carrying for myself for decades, I realized in that moment that I wasn't the problem. But that the cultural message, the cultural narrative expressed by these system of oppression that is patriarchy and diet culture, these message that I was exposed to were the problem. And how I had learned to relate to these messages, I had learned to challenge myself, therefore need to quote, fix myself in order to challenge the system. It wasn't that I was wrong. The system was the problem. And that realization was really reinforced by my clients. At the time I was working in a clinical setting, 101 with patient, one after the other, had a clinic in Toronto. And after seeing hundreds of women in the first 18 months, realizing that they were all coming to me with the same complaints and the same desire. I want to lose weight. I've tried everything and nothing is working anymore. I want to lose weight because I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. They were just like me. They were in a complete state of wishful thinking. Although they've been on a diet for 20 years, they were still seeking the quote, right diet. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Like this is truly a systemic issue. And we're all in that wishful thinking, magical thinking, 10 ideal fantasy world. And it even got reinforced with my study in health and nutrition. Throughout my entire time studying that field, the individual was always pointed out as a problem, never the system. When I finally understood that the real problem wasn't me, it wasn't the collective of women that I was serving. Everything changed. And even my career changed once more. <laughs> I couldn't continue to practice in a clinical setting and, quote, be part of the problem because I was. I was supporting diet culture and patriarchy by dishing out meal plans and protocols and supplements and all that stuff. So I closed my clinic and I opened Beyond the Food and I... The same time in parallel to this new business venture, I went on a journey of self-acceptance. I needed to save myself from all the suffering I had experienced and I was continuing to experience because nobody was coming to save me. The truth is, is that accepting myself for who I am today, in my body now, in today's world, in today's system of oppression, is an audacious move. It's counterculture. It's an act of bravery. And it takes courage. And making that choice requires a huge amount of resilience, fortitude, and motivation to simply accept who I am. Today, I know that I'm a complex human being, imperfect, capable of making mistake, and also significant achievement. Today, I know and I live in a space where self-acceptance is not about being right or wrong. Self-acceptance is about being willing to accept me, even when I'm wrong, and accepting all parts of me. Yes, my body and all of its glory, but most profoundly accepting me, my character, my personality, my past experience, 
my genetic, the intergenerational trauma that got handed down to me, my failure, my mistake, my error, the people that I've hurt. That's what it means to accept myself at my essence and my core. I'm unlearning the false belief that led my path of suffering from the age of 12 to 40 years old. And I created that roadmap to unlearning by actually mapping out my shame for every space where I felt shame, there lies my power. My power is waiting for me and it's waiting for you where you feel shame. That's what we teach inside of Undiet Your Life. By unshaming food, I took my power back over food. I dismantled the good and bad food, the shame tool of diet culture. Food is no longer my identity. It's no longer a tool to manipulate my body. Food is food. By unshaming my body, I claim back the power over my body. I dismantle the thin ideal, the shame tool of diet culture. And that led me to body neutrality and to the concept that all bodies are good bodies. By unshaming my thoughts, I claim back the power over my mind. I dismantle this idea that my thoughts have moral value, which is the shame tool of patriarchy. I get to decide what I think, and I get to decide if I like my thoughts. By unshaming my emotion, I claim back the power over my emotion. I dismantle this concept that other people cause my emotion, which is again, a shame tool of patriarchy. The truth is I create my emotion by the thoughts I think. I use my emotion now as a guide, not a burden. And here's something that's going to serve many of you. I've learned to process internalized fat phobia differently. I get to decide how I experience fat phobia. I don't have to obey to what society tells me that I need to think, therefore feel. It's not a fact that I need to fear fatness because I get to decide my thoughts and I no longer fear fatness. I don't desire to lose weight anymore because my body is no longer my identity. I am so much more than my body. If you are a person identified as a woman, I invite you to consider these last words. You, my sister, are more than a body. I've also learned to embrace my power. The reason why patriarchy and diet culture think that they need to tame me and tame you is because we're powerful. We take space. We can speak our mind. And our real opinion does not need to fit in. I defend my ideas today because I believe in them. I protect myself. I believe in my own goodness and amazingness. And that, in the system we live in, is freaking audacious. When I embrace the audacity of acceptance, I moved myself from fixing to creating my life. Now, today, I spend my resources, my time, my money, my mental space, my emotional space, creating the version of me that I want for the next segment of my life. Not trying to fit myself in a version of myself that is imposed to me. Today, I'm working on unshaming money. I'm not teaching it yet because I'm not an expert at it, but I know I will claim back power over money because what I'm observing now as I'm studying myself, going through the process of unshaming money is that there is a strong correlation between money and body image. More on this to come in weeks and months 
coming forward. I talk a lot about unlearning and relearning. How do we unlearn and relearn? Very simply. We unlearn and relearn by changing our beliefs and our thoughts that we carry with us every day. And these beliefs and these thoughts that you have, in most cases, you didn't choose them. I didn't choose them. They got socialized into me. I internalized them. And for the whole of my 20s and most of my 30s, I never questioned them. I just accepted them as facts in my life and therefore created the suffering that went along with those beliefs because they didn't match who I was. So when I talk about unlearning and relearning, it's done through dismantling these beliefs. Let me share with you some of these beliefs that I had to literally tear apart in my mind, in my heart, in my body, in my life. I used to believe that the only way for me to be confident was through the size of my body. I was convinced that I could never, ever accept my body unless it was smaller. I was adamant that food was good or bad. I had this belief that I had to earn my worth. That to be successful in my career, I needed a thin body. That the only way that other people would accept me is if I was perfect. That it was impossible for me to seek validation from myself, that validation only came through other people. And here's a profound belief that I used to carry, that it was impossible for me to love myself. For decades, I carried these beliefs with me and unknowingly, they created the life that I had because I thought they were true. And then I learned that beliefs and thoughts could be changed. That as an adult woman, I could authorize myself to change my belief system. That I could choose the thought that I could think. And thank you to my mentor, Kara, for that. That was a life-changing moment. And by the time I met her, I had already done the work around food or like 90% of the work around food through intuitive eating. And I had to sit with myself and realize how wrong I was for all of my 20s and 30s to think these beliefs around food, that food was good or bad or healthy or unhealthy. And what I ate meant something about me. And then I realized, holy shit, If I did this with food, unknowingly that's what I was doing, fuck, I could do it with everything in my life. And then I became excited. (laughs) How or where else in my life could I be wrong about what I believed in? Hold on here. Like, that was like a freaking massive ha-ha moment. I created a belief plan. I'm like... I did it unknowingly with food. That means I could do it with my body. And that means I could do it with this and this and this and this and this. And then everything became possible. And I became someone who started to think big, bold thought to lead me where I wanted to go. So here's some of the beliefs that I now carry with me. Yeah, food is neutral. Food doesn't mean anything about me. But I also believe that I'm lovable. And that I can love me. (laughs) I can be someone who's in love with herself. I believe that my body is my ally. I believe that I was born worthy. And there's not a damn thing that anyone can do or I can do that's going to make me unworthy. And the only acceptance that I need from anyone is just my own acceptance. 
I am a better, more profound, professional, and the best coach in the world in the non-diet approach because of my body size, because of the decades of being in diet culture and suffering from it, because of all the things that I was made ashamed of about my body and food, that's what gives me my potency. That's what gives me my potency as a coach, as a professional, as a teacher. That everything that happens in my life has prepared me for the work that I'm doing now. Through the audacity of acceptance, I have developed an unwavering belief in myself. And that is a huge slap in the face to thy culture and to patriarchy because I'm no longer afraid of being me. So I'm going to end this episode on this. And I'm just going to quickly talk about what's next for me. And what I'm studying right now is the concept of self-love. Self-love in the context of what it means to me, what it means to the people that I work with, what it means to the collective as womanhood, what it means in the context of systemic oppression, particularly patriarchy and diet culture. In the same world that we live in, that self-acceptance is audacious Self-love for women is revolutionary because everything we are told about who we are, who we should be, is that loving ourselves or the love from the world to us is conditional, conditional to our body size, to our beauty, to our age. So what if we decide that we just love ourselves and don't give an opinion, (laughs) I was going to say something else, about what other people think we deserve or not love. Because if we give it to ourselves first, the same way we give ourselves acceptance, then we don't need to seek it from the outside in. So this is what 2022 is going to be about for me is studying that concept and the role that it plays in my life. If you want to join me exploring this in your life, join us inside of Undiet Your Life. I'm going to leave you with a quote from Audrey Lorde. I pronounce it with a French accent. Audrey is a poet and a feminist writer. And she said, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. I love you, sister, and I'll see you on the next episode. Beyond ready to shed thy culture from your life and become the expert at your own body? Awesome. Then you need to join on Diet Your Life program. Go to stephaniedodzie.com forward slash join. And join us now. Undiet Your Life is the first program of its kind with the unique combination of mindset, life coaching with intuitive eating and body image. Find your freedom, reclaim your power, and take control of your time so you can refocus on what really matter to you. Join Undiet Your Life at stephaniedoze.com forward slash join, and I'll see you on the other side.